Have you ever wanted to use image layers within Photoshop that you can turn around and see from different angles? And I don't mean actual 3D layers that you need to render, but images of real objects photographed from all angles. It sounds a bit too much to ask, right? But luckily, I have discovered the Photoshop plugin that does exactly what I just described. Yellow Images is the number one marketplace of 40K high quality premium mockups, creative fonts, 360 degrees images, and a creative store full of amazing graphic assets like lettering, icons, illustrations, pattern, textures, presets, brushes, UX and UI kits, and much more. In this video, I will focus on their innovative and unique 360 assets and use them to build a creative composition in Photoshop. I always found working with 3D models within Photoshop quite challenging. There's a lot of things you can do, even animation. If you haven't seen this before, within the timeline panel, you have options to animate your imported 3D models, like this simple flip animation that I created with this coin. And you can amend textures, you can even change the attributes of textures, like the roughness. So there's a lot of things you can do. However, as I said, quite complex to set up whenever you import the 3D models, you might lose textures, you have to reassign them and so on and so forth. Not to mention that you also have to wait for the render to be created when you want to export your work into a still image or you have to wait even longer if you want to export a video using an animated 3D object. So I've been always looking for a feature or hoping to get a feature that can make working with 3D objects easier within Photoshop. I was really excited when Adobe introduced 3D models on Adobe Stock and made them available directly from within Photoshop using the libraries panel. But the problem with these currently is that you can't actually just drag and drop them into Photoshop and rotate them around because they are designed to work more with Adobe Dimension, which is the 3D mockup tool within the Creative Cloud. So even though Photoshop offers some kind of integration, it's not as smooth as I was expecting, or at least it's not there yet. But if I have a 3D model within a CC library, like these ones here, they are all licensed from Adobe Stock, they are actually grayed out, meaning that I can't really directly access them. What I can do is to right click and choose use in document. So forcing Photoshop in a way to bring it in. But this unfortunately is going to be just a low resolution preview of the object. It doesn't even include transparency. So even though I have licensed this asset, it's not going to work within a composition easily. It's low resolution. I can't turn it around. It's not a 3D layer. So it's not really usable in this way. What I'm supposed to do is to bring it into dimension, set it up the way I want it. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and I'm using the shortcut one, two, and three for camera movements. So let's just say if I select this object, I can rotate it around, find the angle that I need. And then when I'm ready, I can switch to render and then decide what format I need. In this case, I would use probably PSD, which would create layers for me. And I will be able to separate the 3D model from the background, but this would take a long time. So if I start rendering it, it's going to take a long time, especially if you have complex objects. So this creates a really nice polished result with nice cast shadows and everything. So I can't complain Then this is going to be a really nice model that I can work with, but it's still going to be a static image. It is just a Photoshop file with layers, but I won't be able to turn this model around. Of course, I know I might be asking a little bit too much, having a fully rendered 3D object moving around in real time within Photoshop. So that would require something like a game engine. However, I found a really cool Photoshop plugin which does almost exactly that. Even though it is not using an actual 3D object, it makes you feel like having a fully rendered 3D layer that you can interact with within your compositions. So let me show you how this works. This plugin is called PNG Images 360 and it's from Yellow Images, which is a brilliant site for a lot of things like object mockups, creative fonts. But most importantly, what I'm going to focus on now are these PNG Images 360. They are royalty-free images, so you have to buy them. They are not free, 
but they are high resolution photos of real objects and high quality 3D renders that you can directly use within your Photoshop compositions. So it's a really cool and innovative technology that this company came up with and it really breaks that barrier between the two-dimensional and three-dimensional workflows. And I love the fact that within Photoshop you can access these assets directly from this panel which comes with that plugin. So the PNG Images 360 is something you can download for free and then it will show up in the extensions under the window menu. And from this panel, you can search for anything. Let's just say I'm looking for a barn that I'm going to use in this composition and I select the one that I like. I can already rotate it around here within the preview area. So I can turn it in any angles and it really does feel like a 3D model. But the best thing is, is once I find the angle that I need, I can just simply insert it into a Photoshop document and before I license it, it comes up as a lower resolution watermarked layer, but it is a smart object layer, which means that it has connection to the original asset even before I license it, which means if I turn the asset around here in the panel and I choose update, it's going to connect to the layer within my composition and it will update it to that angle or view. So this is already a great way to test and see whether an asset is going to work within a composition. But what I also love about it is that it's already using transparency so that it's completely extracted from its original background. And this, of course, was a 3D model, but we can also find actual 360 high resolution photos of real objects. So for example, if I type in, let's say, leaf, this looks really nice. I can just insert it again into the document, make it a bit bigger just so we can see it. And sometimes it's hard to tell whether an object is actually a photo of, or a 3D render. But in this case, I feel like this is definitely an actual photograph. So let me just update it again. And there you can see it from this angle, but let's just turn it around and take a look underneath and update the layer. So it's either a very convincing 3D model or it's an actual photo but it's really hard to tell unless we license these assets. Now, if you have multiple layers within a composition using assets from this plugin, you can license them all at once by going into the settings tab and then just simply choose remove watermarks. So it's going to work on it, find those assets and I can choose add to cart, which will then come up in the browser and then I can just proceed to purchase them. And once you finish the checkout and you bought the assets, you can come back into Photoshop, click on remove watermarks, and it's going to just check the license. Since you already have it, it's going to allow you to work with them without the watermarks on. Now you might be wondering why these assets are not high resolution enough. So when I make it bigger, this leaf, we can see that it already has the transparency that I talked about but it's very pixelated and low resolution. And that is because the plugin is set by default to be working faster. So it downloads all of these different angles and views individually. So there's loads of images for each models that needs to be downloaded. So by default it's set to speed, but if you switch to quality and you choose update, you will see that all of these objects will render in a much higher quality. And of course, once you license an asset, you will be able to use it in as many compositions as you want. Now to demonstrate this plugin in action, I'm going to put together a full composition solely relying on 360 assets. I have already collected all of the elements that I need and they are all licensed. So notice when I select the layers, I can see them all showing up there on the left side. And let's just say if I want to update one of them, I'm just turning this cone around, let's say like that. I can just update it and it will update within the composition. And these are all really beautiful high resolution objects that we can work with. So even though this was a photo, there is a really good selection around it. And once again, we can turn it in any angle, update it. And of course that's going to render that full high resolution version here within the document as well. So without any further delay, let's get cracking and put this composition together.
360 plugin from Yellow Images is completely free, so you can download it and test out this workflow with the watermarked assets. But if you guys are interested to also purchase licenses, I'm happy to say that I actually got a special discount from the team at Yellow Images. So it's a 30% discount that you can access by using the coupon in the description below. And these coupons are limited, so make sure you don't miss out. It's first come, first serve. Once again, the link and the coupon is in the description below. Okay, so you've seen me putting this composition together, but there's just a couple of things I wanted to point out which I love about this workflow. First of all, is that you can create multiple instances of the same asset and they can be individually amended and changed around. So you can see the leaf that I use here in the background, for example, there's four instances and they are like separate smart objects and each of them can individually be changed around. So if I select this one here on the left, I can move it around a bit, turn it sideways, update it, and then it will update. Once again, I can turn it back, update, and it doesn't affect the other instances because even though they are the same assets, they are not connected. Then the other cool thing that you can do is of course, mask objects. So for example, this little mushroom here, if I zoom a bit closer, you can see I masked out some parts of it. And this just simply using the mask that comes with the smart object by default. So I can just mask over it with the brush tool and then I can show and hide details as you would normally by simply painting with black and white. But what's cool is that having a mask on a 360 asset allows you to go back and make changes. Like let's say I turn it a little bit further up, update it, and the mask stays in place, but the asset can still update. So if I move it back to the same angle, update again, you will see it still has the mask connected to it but I can turn it around, move it around, but it really helps to keep the composition the way I've set it up and just make slight amends to the object. The other thing, of course, what you can do, as you can see here, I already added some shading on this layer and a couple of the other ones as well. Without that shading, it was just a little bit too bright and it didn't fit with the rest of the comp. So this again is completely staying intact when I'm moving the rotation or changing the object's rotation around. So the whole composition can continue to work without me having to go back and make dramatic changes. Now, another thing I wanted to show you, which I love about working with these assets, is that even bigger items that we have in the composition, like this clump of moss, can be amended later without messing up too much details. So when I select that, and I turn it around, let's just say, I want to have a look at it from a different angle. I can update it. And you see, because I have all the layers already set up in a way, it doesn't actually mess up anything, but it gives me a completely different angle of view of that object. And this is a photograph. If I zoom closer, you can see the amount of detail that I have here. So let me zoom back and turn it around again. So we can take a look at, again, a completely different angle and it's just a fresh look of your composition from a different angle. And because there's so many different angles, I can really look around, experiment, see which direction is best. Maybe I can turn it upside down a bit like that. And that actually looks really good. So really unexpected results you can get by just turning things around, checking it from different angles, and see what works best. What's even better is that undo redo works just by simply updating these different views. So I can really quickly check all the different angles that we just tested out and find the one that's best suited to the composition. So I actually feel like probably this angle looks even better than the original setup. However, having a little bit of gap here to make it look like the whole construction is standing on these legs probably shows better. So having that negative space there is actually helping. It's always good to look at the outline or the silhouette of your composition and you want to make sure everything is clear and easy to read. So I can just move this mushroom as well to the right there. And one additional thing I wanted to mention is that you can of course use filters and transformations as well because they will be connected to the smart object. 
So this mushroom, once again, uses also puppet warp adjustment. If I turn it off, this is how the mushroom asset looks by default. And this is how it looks with the puppet warp. If I double click on it, I can access these points, but maybe I can show it to you on another item like this mushroom here. So having that selected, I can go into edit, puppet warp, put down a couple of points and then start making amends to it. So this once again works with the asset, but still keeping a link to the original plugin. So if I accept these changes and I think maybe I need to show this mushroom from the side, I can update it while still having the puppet warp in action. So I can even rotate it around, maybe turn it back down, update it, and the puppet warp is still going to update. I'm just going to keep it like this and maybe just make it a little bit smaller, move it in the back. We could also move it all the way in the back, having it there in the background. That might work even better in this case just a little bit too overpowering otherwise. So all in all, we can see that working with the 360 images from Yellow Images, this workflow is extremely unique where you get to work with actual photographs in three-dimensional views or photorealistic 3D objects completely rendered and ready to work with in Photoshop. And to be able to have all of them on layers, accessing the rotation, and putting them together into composition, whether solely relying on these assets or maybe combining them with other images or illustrations that you are creating yourself. So let me know in the comment section below what you think about this plugin. And also if you are interested to see more of these type of videos from me where I test out plugins for Adobe applications. Thanks a lot for watching. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we release new videos. Click on the link on my right and start your membership today to get access to over 200 hours of training courses and personal mentoring by me and my team of creative professionals. Have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.